Hello, Kate. Hello, Angie. And how are you today, Kate? I'm very well. Lovely it's, to be talking to you. It's good to see you because you're normally out the building at one and yeah. I'm normally in the building at three. So it's actually nice to sit in a room together. Isn't and it? Have and a little... be like waving hey, as one comes and one Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, Kate, the documentary Finding Derek, we were all incredibly moved by that. And... Um, Tonight on ITV, there's going to be the kind of part two of this, which is caring for Derek. Can you, without giving too much away, can you tell me a bit about the documentary? It's wonderful how kind people were about finding Derek. And I think um, it's always very difficult, isn't it, when something's so personal as it was especially to Derek, but also to myself and the children, yeah. um, to, to, to know whether it's right to be filming it. But I think, um, you know, some people keep a diary of extraordinary events. And for me, it's a way of sort of thinking and processing what's going on. And then as time got close to airing it, it I realised that there was, there was stuff to say. Yes. So with the second one, I wanted to make sure that there was still stuff to say uh, beyond you know, responding to very kind people that come up to me all the time and say, how is Derek? Or, you know, we'd love to know. And um, and so I think what this one does, um, in a probably rather brutal way, in the sense that there's definitely no lip gloss involved or makeup or blow dries, <laughs> like you get to see when I'm at Smoother on Good Morning Britain, um, it is the challenge of a big life event and the ripples that go through the whole family. And also actually looking at what COVID does and mm. how people have to pick their but their lives up. And I guess not just COVID, but, you know, every day someone is going to experience either a diagnosis of, uh, of an illness which will change their perception of their own future or something will happen to them that turns life on its head and it's the scrabbling to cope on what's there to help you and how to navigate that that is often very hard, I think. Yeah. It's called Caring for Derek and mm. so straight away I'm... My assumption is it's looking about his care, the care system, you know, mm. caring for him when he was in hospital, the difference and maybe the challenges and perhaps the, the different angles of caring for him now that he's at home. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say um, that actually, but this is certainly not an attack on the care system no, because no. everybody that I've encountered that, that delivers care are just extraordinary. And in fact, beyond that, the people that are there to try and administer, you know, that run the agencies and run the local authorities and run the NHS bit of it are also extraordinary well. But it is the most extraordinary thing, I think, firstly, emotionally, when you're adjusting to a new role yourself, for me as a carer, and for Derek to be somebody that's cared for, um, you find yourself in a in a world that you never expect to experience, and it's very different from how we encounter our health care, yes. which is going to the doctor, and we all have experience of how that works, and thank goodness it's there, the NHS. But it, it is different, and um, and I feel very undervalued. Okay. You know? okay. Yeah. Okay. There was a time when I'm assuming that he was in hospital and mm. you were probably advised that he'd be given certain medicines, that he'd be, you know... Um, given... Yeah, well, Derek got sick very early on. So it's, I mean, the wonderful thing about talking now is that we now have a vaccination programme, yeah. which is really helping people um, to not get as sick as Derek did and hopefully helping us to live with COVID in a way that we just couldn't in March. Mm. I mean, the doctors, everybody was scrabbling to cope. There were no treatments. There was certainly no cure. Um, and so at that point, when Derek got sick, they didn't have tools to save other than l incredible experience and the will to save someone's life. So, right, what do we need to do? The kidneys are failing. Let's take care of that. What do we need to do? This is Let's take care of that. Let's keep this person alive. Yes. Um, and that saved his life. And really, 
you know, it's care that's going to give him his life back now. Don't you? And that care means something different outside of the hospital than in the hospital. So in hospital, incredibly good care means getting experts in, getting, you know, um, things that need to be tackled in the body tackled. Outside, we think of care as basically somebody um, in a sort of supportive role without giving the respect that's needed. Mm. But actually, care involves everything. It involves exploring what can be done. I remember uh, someone else saying to me, um, Kate, when will you accept that Derek has changed? And I said, well, I don't know that we're at that point. Um, for instance, you know, if I broke my arm today, yeah. God forbid, I wouldn't say, well, I'm just going to live now with a broken arm because my arm's broken. Right. You'd go to the doctor and try and get it fixed. And if they couldn't fix it that well and it still had limited movement, you'd probably then try and go and get therapy for it, yeah. wouldn't you? And, and you do everything possible to get the best back. And I think, you know, with Derek, we're trying to get the best back and we haven't been on that journey yet because unlike a broken arm, which people can diagnose, we still haven't got an agreed diagnosis, really, other than he got COVID and he's in this state. Yeah. So now it's about exploring how to get him better. But the documentary really is a family um, trying to navigate their way yeah. through, a, uh, through a big chapter of life. Is that what you'd like people to get from this documentary? Well, I mean, one of the things I hope um, people will feel is I know I'm incredibly lucky. I know that the carers that we've had in and the nurses and the systems in place have been really, really good to me and Derek. I also know that, you know, I've got very supportive bosses and I've got very supportive people and friends and colleagues here at Smooth Radio around me. I know I'm very lucky, but I know that there's people who are much worse off. And I kind of think, well, you know, if I was a doctor, I'd go and try to heal the sick. But I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm me, I'm a journalist <laughs> and a radio presenter. So all I can really do is speak up for them. Yes. So I hope that when people look at this, maybe they can see some parallels in things they've been through. And maybe it will hopefully make people think again about what we do um, in terms of, of, of taking people forward. Yeah. You know, I must say, the documentary, it's called Caring for Derek. But I'm going to yeah. ask, okay, who's caring for you? You've got this show on Smooth. You're on Good Morning Britain. You are a mother. You've just taken on life stories. Well, I'll ask you about Billy and Darcy in a moment. When do you breathe? When do you exhale? When do you care? When do you administer self-care? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean... Um... It's, that's a funny one, that, isn't it? I mean, I've not had any massages for quite yeah. some time. And I've certainly, if you look at my hands, definitely not had any <laughs> manicures. So, no, sort of, those sort of things probably aren't the priority now. But actually, in a situation like this, you do see the best and the worst. So, um, so work is a real joy. I mean, it also helps to pay the mortgage. <laughs> but it's a, it's a real joy. And actually, being surrounded by so many um, great friends... Uh, when I come to work is wonderful. But that, the other thing is, is that there's a lovely thing that people come up to you and say, oh, good for you. And people come up to me all the time and say, oh, you know, I was feeling down and it's great to hear you on the radio. It's great to hear you doing that. Um, and so there's a, people give you a lot back as well, yes. don't they? So yeah. maybe they're caring for me, Angie. And how are Billy and Darcy? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a hell of a thing, isn't it? Hmm. And if you look at some Billy, he's 12, and you don't really remember much before four. Uh, a dad, dad, his dad um, was a very big, loud um, person in his life who now, who would take him on adventures and now is extremely restricted in terms yeah. of what he can do physically. Um, you know, has to spend most of his time in bed and can't really speak. So for him, that's a big chunk of your life. It's yes. sort of about a third of your life that, that there's been a change. And I'm sure that, that, you know, there's things that they are dealing with that's very tough for both of them. But they're also absolutely extraordinary with him and with me. I mean, they seem to instinctively know the right thing to say. Um, and Kids are resilient, though, aren't they? They're really resilient yeah. and also they are, you know, um, and they love having their dad home. 
And you that's know? a beautiful thing. That's and a, it's beautiful a beautiful thing. thing. So when you just reflect back over mm. the last few years, what would you like to see or what's in your heart for 2022? Um, what is in my heart for twenty for 2022? Well, obviously, I would love to see Derek progress. You know, I think however much we talk about, um, you know, you talk about self-care for me and the challenges for Darcy and Billy and, of course, his mum and dad and his sisters and all of the people around him that love him. Um, actually, it's much tougher being Derek, you know, yeah. waking up in the morning, um, being trapped as he is at the moment um, inside himself and trying to find a way out is a big challenge. So it would be lovely to see him burrow his way out a little bit more and, um, and then we can all carry on and enjoy life. Let's stay positive. Kate, thank Let's you so much. Caring for Derek, it's on ITV tonight at 9pm. Brilliant. Thank you, Kate. Not at all, thank you. Thank you very much indeed for chatting to me. You're a joy. <laughs> <laughs>